Let's finally conclude this module one, commenting and introducing one possible way for solving ordinary differential equation by means of a computer. And in this case, I'm not only restricting my attention to the linear, non-homogeneous or homogeneous constant coefficient ordinary differential equation, but rather to a generic case. What I'm suggesting is not to use any more of these uh, analytical and mathematical techniques or the knowledge of the solutions whenever it's possible, but rather delegate completely to a computer the solution in terms of numerics. This is more or less what happens in the weather forecast. There are a series of equations, and by the way, these are really ordinary differential equations, that would be very complicated for people to solve them by hand. They are instantiated by specific measurement, where, say, uh, pressure and temperature at different points are allowing a fed to these equations, and then the computer is taking care of these solutions. Now, computers are intrinsically digital, and perhaps you know that computers are working at some speed. They have inside a kind of clock, and the clock is like in an orchestra, it's like the director is. Uh, keeping a specific pace for operation to occur. This is an intrinsic feature of digital computers. And maybe, just to give you an example, maybe your computer is going at uh, 2 gigahertz instead of mine is going at, I don't know, 10 years ago it was going at uh, 100 megahertz. So these are all, in, all indication of a speed, of a period, of a frequency, of a clock ticking. So time in the, or say the independent variable, but here I'm thinking about time, inside a computer is discrete. And discrete in this period are all the quantities inside, uh, inside a computer. I have to go back to the moment in which I said, well, let's take the uh, horizontal axis where the independent variable is continuously varying. And replace it by a set of discrete points. Now, in this specific case, I would like the points to be equally spaced, and I call them uh, t0, t1, t2, etc. As I said, in this case, there are integer multiples of a quantity that I called integration step, whose width, whose uh, amount, whose size is uh, quite important. Because if it's too large, then, as I will show you, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. If it's too small, on the other hand, you're going to have a huge number of time steps and the simulation will, is going to take a really a long time. I have to resort introducing a method for numerically solving ordinary differential equation that is called Euler method to the concept, to the real, to the very definition of derivative. We saw that differential equations are actually defined and in terms of a function that is the unknown, which is also going to be the case in, in our numerical, in our digital version. But there is this derivative. And derivative is something that is a little bit complicated for computers to crunch. So what we are considering is to first interrupt the point in which we had the incremental ratio with the limit of delta t that goes to zero, so the infinitesimal limit, and just stop at delta t being finite, hopefully small, but not infinitesimal, not converging to zero. So the Euler method consists in replacing everywhere you have df of a dt, or df of a dx, whatever, the incremental ratio. And of course, this is wrong, because strictly speaking, the equivalence that I'm showing, this is a definition, holds only when delta t, where the increment, is infinitesimal, not when it's finite. So let's make an example. Let's consider the non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation that we started and we studied uh, until a moment ago. And let me approximate the derivative with the incremental ratio. So this is clearly wrong because the derivative is uh, equivalent to the incremental ratio only in the limit of delta t of this increment, of this discretization in time, that goes to zero, goes to an infinitesimal values.
But if I replace this quantity to the derivative sign, I can write an equation that's, that is relatively easy to solve. For instance, if I have the knowledge of f of t, I can get an understanding of f of t plus delta t simply by purely algebraic combination. I have to know the value of g1 in t, but this is known, it's given, it's the non-homogeneous term. I have delta t, I have a, everything needed to write an algebraic uh, differential equation. Here it's written, uh, uh, making explicit f of t plus delta t, and if you want, I can make an iterative expression uh, indicating with k the generic step, knowing a way to calculate f1 if I know f0, f2 if I know f1, f3 if I know f2, and so on and so forth. These are the definition of these uh, temporary factors, t temporary numbers that I defined. A tilde is 1 plus A times delta T, and GK is delta T times G1 calculated in uh, times which are integer multiples of the delta T. The initial condition in continuous time, so this is the continuous time differential equation, this is the discrete time approximation. That's the reason why F of tilde is a kind of symbol that is that is, has replaced f. It's not exactly the same. It's going to contain some error. So the initial condition here translates into the same initial condition in the discrete case, and this will be our starting point. I know f0, therefore I will know f1 as a function of the previous step, f0, and so on and so forth. And the story of indicating with different symbol f tilde uh, the solution of the discrete, so this series of, num of numbers, this series of samples, is because I hope that these discrete series will be corresponding to the discrete time sampled version of the solution of this differential equation. So f calculated in multiple integer multiples of the delta t, but this is wishful thinking. Delta t might be chosen in the right way, small enough, but will never be used uh, in being infinitesimal, because otherwise this is not going to be something that computers can process, can be performing. So the iteration and the discrete time version is bound to be an approximation, yet better an approximation than nothing in case the differential equation is very complicated or cannot be solved analytically in so-called closed form. So it cannot be, uh, the, I cannot write an expression for the solution. Let me make another example for a differential equation which is uh, nonlinear and for which I have no idea which would be the solution. So here you see it contains uh, no explicit dependence on t, but it contains a square dependence on f and then a log of f. So clearly uh, highly nonlinear. The way I would deal with this would be through the explicit Euler method. I would approximate the derivative with the uh, incremental ratio, so just without doing the limit, and delta t will remain finite, will not get infinitesimal. And I would write converting, like I did before, this differential equation into a discrete time algebraic, or in this case it's not even algebraic equation, a procedure, an iterative expression that would allow me to approximate, perhaps, the original solution at integer multiples of delta t by iterating, by crunching, and calculating f of 2, on the basis of f of 1, f of 3, on the basis of f of 2, and so on and so forth. So this is uh, the procedure to follow. This is another example. And in this other example, I'm just converting, um, in the same case, I'm replacing the derivative with the incremental ratio, and then factorizing uh, terms, and also making explicit that t is replaced by a discrete version of it, so it's k times delta t. k is going to be the running, independent, discrete time variable, and I will have some kind of initial conditions that would apply to all cases.